Hey guys, I'm Joe and Happy New Year to all of you guys and here's the first video of mine of 2016. Today is going to be a quick sum up of certain movies that I've seen over the past couple of weeks. Not Star Wars, I've seen that like four times already. I'm probably going to go see it one more time and then that'll that'll be the end of it. By the way, it's still a great movie, still holds up. I had a chance to either go to the theater to see a couple movies that I've been wanting to see, having to wait for since we don't exactly get wide releases where I live, and also to maybe watch a movie or two on iTunes rental because Netflix doesn't exactly get the latest release is exactly if you know what I mean at least here in the United States that way I'd be able to finally sum up my thoughts on worst movies of 2015 and best movies of 2015 so I will be talking about Joy, Hateful Eight, Inside Out, and The Revenant oh yeah and uh, I tried watching the Fantastic Four reboot 12 minutes in I turned it off boring well Let's get to it, shall we? First movie I saw on Christmas Day with my mom was Joy. Joy is written and directed by David O. Russell, starring my future wife, uh, sorry, Jennifer Lawrence, who you know I'm a big fan of, as you can probably tell by now. They also got some other great actors in here, like Robert De Niro and Bradley Cooper, and a couple others like Virginia Madsen are in the movie, too. Joy is a story about Joy Mangano. I don't remember her last name, the inventor of the Miracle Mop, where you have a mop where if you push it in and pull it out like this, it gets rid of all the debris that it picks up off the floor, and you don't have to pick it out with your hands and end up cutting yourself if you're picking up glass on the floor. And you think about it, it's actually a pretty cool invention, I would say, and comes in, it would come in handy if I had my own place. And going into this movie, I was really looking forward to it, not just because it's Jennifer Lawrence, but, you know, that was a big reason. But I like David O. Russell as a filmmaker as of the last few years. I mean, The Fighter... Silver Linings Playbook, which is my, still my favorite movie of his to this day, and American Hustle. What? Yeah, I like that movie. You really find that amusing? That is the joke and a half! Oh, shut up. But considering Jennifer Lawrence's movies in the past year, Mockingjay Part 2 was really disappointing, and I was hoping that this movie was not going to be that case. Luckily, as far as her movies go, this makes up for that in a lot of ways. But I have to say, I don't think it's great, though. I mean, I'm sure some of you are probably wondering, is Jennifer Lawrence, he's gonna love the movie no matter what. I thought it was good, but I wouldn't say it's something that I want to watch again. Now, to sum it up really quickly, the first half of the movie is very slow and very uneven, I would say. You're getting to know her character, what her place is in life, and her parents are divorced, she's divorced herself, she has a couple kids, and she works a dead-end job. But then she discovers the idea of her inventing the mop, and an idea that she possibly had when she was as a kid, if I remember correctly. And the second half is where it really picks up. That's when I started to get interested in what was happening because she's showing off her invention on QVC with the help of Bradley Cooper's character who runs the agency of QVC in Pennsylvania. Not to be specific on details, but it's a little while away from my hometown. That was pretty cool. But like I said, the first half is a bit uneven and it's kind of boring and it drags a little bit at times. But aside from the character of Joy and her ex-husband and maybe... Bradley Cooper's character, there's really nobody else in the movie that I really liked. Not one of them are, are that likable or that interesting of a character. Her sister or half-sister or whatever the hell she was to her, I hated her. She really got on my nerves in this one. Some of the stuff that she does and says to her, and I thought the overall movie was a little bit lacking of that emotional punch that you'd want to see when she finally gets what she wants for her invention. Like, people who screw her over, over the money that she was owed, for the profit and all that stuff. I felt that it was a little bit lacking. I don't know how exactly to articulate it. I'd probably have to watch it again. It's been a couple weeks. But it wasn't a complete disaster, so I wasn't that disappointed, but I wasn't that amazed either. It's good. But I would not say it was a great movie. But as expected, Jennifer Lawrence is great in the role as always. She puts 110% into her characters, was there any doubt? Bitch about her all you want with whatever she's been saying about gender issues or whatever, or her winning a Golden Globe again. Look, I doubt she's gonna care what you guys say about her. She's still gonna do what she does, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Show a little respect, shall we? The next movie I saw was The Hateful Eight. Quentin Tarantino, a Western? I'm there. You ain't gonna hear any complaining from me. This movie was initially thrown into the trash can by Tarantino since the script was leaked out online. But then I guess for some reason he decided, you know what, I'm gonna make it anyway. Django Unchained is probably my favorite Tarantino film, personally. I know a lot of people say Pulp Fiction and Glorious Bastards are Reservoir Dogs. Don't remember Reservoir Dogs that much, but Pulp Fiction was great, as was Inglorious Bastards. Great movies in their own right, but Django Unchained was the one that has all the right marks for me. This one is about Kurt Russell's character who's escorting a prisoner to her hanging, played by Jennifer Jason Lee, and they both run into Samuel L. Jackson, who's looking for shelter during the winter storm in Wyoming, and they end up staying in this hotel of sorts, where you see Tim Roth's character, Bruce Stern's character, and a couple other people where you immediately you're like, 
Something's a little off here. And of course, a lot of shenanigans ensue with the violence, the dialogue, trying to figure out what's going on and how to get to a certain spot in the movie. Like with Joy, I thought this was a good movie. Not great, though. I, not to say it was a bad movie. It was a good movie, but the problem I had with it is I felt there was a little too much exposition, a little too much getting to the next point and getting into the next point because Tarantino's movies have a tendency to go really, really long. Like Django Unchained, it's really long, but I would not know what scenes to cut out. And I don't know what I would cut out of this movie either. Again, I'd have to watch it again. But I felt it really, really dragged on in the middle act and it got a little repetitive at times. And it wasn't until a certain thing happens involving coffee, that's when I thought the movie started to really gain its steam again. The first act starts off pretty good. The second act, it kind of slows down a little bit. Like I said, very repetitive. But then the third act really picks up its steam. Everybody in this movie is on their A-game. Kurt Russell, probably the best that I've seen him in a long time. He is so great here. Samuel L. Jackson. It's Samuel L. Jackson. What else can I tell you? Jennifer Jason Lee. Her character is just repulsively idiotic. Oh, God. I wanted to smack her so bad. Tim Roth is great. Bruce Stern is really good. And Channing Tatum is in here. Usually, I'm not a fan of his. A lot of times, I think he's a little too stupid for the sake of it. But without going into any specifics, he surprised me here. And I'm going to talk about this with The Revenant pretty soon. The snowstorms in this movie made me feel cold. I mean, it's, it's winter right now, but with all the snow and the wind and the camera work, where it zooms in and you see the snow coming down the mountains, <sighs> man, I felt like I was right there in the mountains, freezing my butt off. <laughs> but yeah, Hateful Eight, I would say it's a good movie. Tarantino, he still got it. Not one of his best movies, I would say. I like Django Unchained better and Pulp Fiction and Inglorious Bastards, but I still had a really good time with it. But everybody else put 110% effort into this movie that I can't really ignore that. The next movie I saw was Inside Out on iTunes Rental. Now, with animated movies these days, I get the feeling that a lot of them tend to be very bombastic for the sake of colors and keeping kids' attention spans in check and all that stuff. I know I need to watch more animated stuff. Now, I, I did see an animated movie in 2015, and that was the Peanuts movie, but mostly that was because I grew up with the Peanuts. I love Charlie Brown and Snoopy. You want to know what my thoughts are? Go watch my review of it. But I heard a lot of good things about Inside Out, and I just went, all right, what could possibly be good about this one? Wow. What a really good movie. I was impressed. Very touching, layered, and at a certain point, I actually was almost tearing up a little bit. It was, it was out of control. Amy Poehler as Joy, she is really great with the voice acting, and you feel for the character of Riley, who's going through a lot by moving to another state, adjusting to a new school, thinking about possibly going back home where she thought she had a great life there. And it's not just nonsense for the sake of colors. There's an actual purpose to everything that's going on. I can't really say anything else that hasn't already been said already. Everybody is pretty much said it all at this point. Inside out, thumbs up. And now for the final act. The Revenant. This is something that I was really curious about. I mean, it's Leonardo DiCaprio. How could I not see anything that that guy's in? He's a great actor. He's proven that time and time and again, that even if he's not in a big franchise like Spider-Man, Batman, or the X-Men, he continues to prove how great of an actor he is. And this movie is no different. The Revenant is made by Alejandro Iñárritu. I, I really tried with that name. I really did. He's a guy who made Birdman last year, which won Best Picture, so... We'll go with that. It's a story of fur traders living in the wilderness in the western United States in the wintertime, trying to find their way back home after they're attacked by Indians. And then certain shenanigans go on where Tom Hardy's character causes Leonardo DiCaprio to go on a revenge mission. And that's all I'm going to really say. I mean, there's not much going on in the plot as far as character substance. But this movie, I gotta say, this was the most original surreal, enticing, visceral, white-knuckled, intense experience I've ever had in a movie theater. I really don't know how to describe this movie. It's, it's really... I don't really know. It's, it's, it's really hard for me to digest this stuff. I'm still thinking about it after I saw it. Intense doesn't even begin to cover what this movie was like. People have talked about the camera work by Alejandro here where the, all these long, wide takes of the mountains and the use of natural lighting. They don't use studio lights for the nighttime scenes. And like with Birdman, he has shots that still go on for like maybe a minute or two, and you don't really realize it until there's a cut. But there was a few times where I just went, oh my god, this shot's still going on. What the heck? And I honestly do not know how certain shots were created. I mean, I'm no expert on filmmaking, and I don't really see myself making movies. I mean, I like to analyze the story parts of it, but noticing the camera work in this movie, 
it's unlike anything I've ever seen. I'm not exaggerating. And like with Hateful Eight, I felt cold as hell. It was brutal, and I felt like I was gonna catch hypothermia. And there's a scene involving DiCaprio going up against a grizzly bear. Oh my god, that was... Oh man, it was brutal as hell, and... Oh yeah, that's all I'm gonna tell you. And do I need to tell you that DiCaprio's good in this movie? Of course not. He's great, he gives it his all. He, I don't think he really has that much of a character to him, but since this is a survival movie, I can't really fault the movie for that. Same thing with Tom Hardy and Domino Gleason's character, General Hux, whatever. <laughs> Tom Hardy's really good too, I mean, he's picking a lot of really good stuff, but I have to admit, Chris Stuckman pointed this out in his review of the movie. He has gone to the Tom Hardy-isms here. Take back your city. One Gotham is ashes. You have my permission to die. And he did it with Mad Max last year. My name's Mad Max. I need some water. I want water. Food. Right, right, right. <laughs> there were a couple times in this movie, too, where I just went... What? That being said, though, there were some things that I thought maybe drag the movie down a little bit. It's really, really, really long. There were a few times where I f really felt its runtime. This is about like two hours and 45 minutes or something like that. I felt like I was watching a four hour movie and the pacing is slow. I mean, really slow. Now, look, I'm not against slow paced movies because sometimes you have to allow the audience to digest what's going on. But this time I thought it was really slow that I actually got bored at least maybe two or three times in the whole movie. And there was some attempts to create this imagery for DiCaprio's character to give you an insight to his character. And it's not really clear as to what it's all meant to be about. They do explain certain things with his family and his wife. But then there's some certain things to connect Tom Hardy's character with his character and all that stuff. Like I said, it's not really clear what they were trying to do. I guess they were trying to show you how good of a man he is despite certain things that he's done in his past but i didn't really fully get what was going on with that whole aspect of the movie nevertheless the revenant was a really admirable attempt by alejandro Inaritu. again i'm trying as hard as i can to pronounce that name that i can't not recommend that you see this movie but this is not for the faint of heart it's brutal it's intense it is long and that bear scene alone like i said with the brutality Ooh, man. But th and this is not something that I know that I'm going to watch again. All because the way I see it, The Revenant is an experience. And you don't really know if you could sit through that level of emotions again. So that concludes my mini reviews. Thank you all for watching this. And thank you for sticking around with me the last year or so. I really appreciate all the feedback you guys have given me. And I can't wait to see what 2016 has to offer. And stay tuned for my worst movies of 2015. And for my best movies of 2015 before I go on to review the new releases of 2016. And also want to make another quick announcement for you guys. I'm going to be talking with 22 Tiger Dude about each movie in the Dark Knight trilogy. Once a month leading up to Ben Affleck's incarnation of Batman and Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice as a little reflection on the Dark Knight trilogy since we got a new version of Batman coming up and how we feel about the previous incarnation and also to give you my personal in-depth thoughts about each movie in the trilogy and hopefully provide some answers for the people who still insist that the Dark Knight Rises is terrible. It's not. It's not. Thank you guys once again for watching my videos and for watching this video. Hope you guys have a happy new year. Look forward to 2016 with you guys and I'll see you next time.